Hello. Welcome back to the tavern. This is my 2021 January weekly setups. This is a spread that I, for the most part, came up with myself. I wanted a section to have goals and tasks. I wanted an area to start off the week with a affirmation or a inspirational quote of some kind. I wanted a space to do a tarot card of the week and I wanted another space to do a drawing of some kind and another space to study some plants and their magical attributes. For each week, I put the associations for that day of the week. For example, a holiday or a color or an incense. These are things that I referenced out of Lily Llewellyn's Magical Almanac for 2021. And I also wanted a section to do a daily gratitude. Uh, each box is designed for journaling more than it is planning and scheduling. I like to write down what I need to do for the week in the long goals box and then try to schedule it for a day in that week because it helps me keep track of time and it helps me complete tasks because I have set that time aside for that said tasks. But when you're running behind, sometimes you have to keep pushing stuff, keep rescheduling stuff, and that seemed to have happened a lot in um, January. <laughs> My original idea for this doodle was that Tiamat is creating something. It's kind of conceptually creating something like building the tavern or building a business or building abundance in my life, something like that. I also wanted a cute idea for a sticker. So if you like this design and would like to see it as a sticker, maybe it's not Tiamat in the sticker, maybe it's a witch or something instead, let me know. I think as the weeks went on, I kind of forgot that concept and the story in the following doodles doesn't really line up with that anymore. And then I had a Five Guys french fry break. Five Guys has the best french fries. They're like kind of spicy. I love spicy. Snowdrops symbolize hope. The first sign of seeing them bloom after winter symbolizes the passing of sorrow. Every plant I picked, I tried to make sure they were a plant that blooms in January. I'm only just learning about plants and magical properties, so I thought I would incorporate that into my journal and force myself to learn a little bit about different flowers and herbs and stuff like that as I'm setting things up. I really wanted the journal to have multiple purposes, not just to keep track of scheduling and journaling, but a way for me to also learn along the way. So I might be learning about different plants, I might be learning about different holidays, I might be learning about myself. I also wanted a way to force myself to always be drawing something, so that's why it was important to me to have sections where I was doodling things. I also want a lot of these doodles to be translated into stickers because I'm very interested in starting a sticker business. I think that would be a lot of fun. Hopefully when I'm all caught up on my bullet journal planning videos, or I can start making those stickers. If you would like to see videos of me making those stickers, please let me know in the comments down below. I love stickers, as you can see, here's my collection of stickers, and that's why I tried to experiment with stickers on this craft paper. Uh, I've used these kind of stickers in my previous planners that were not bullet journals, and they seem, or they were fun and they work fine, but something about them in this journal, I think maybe because everything is hand drawn, it just wasn't working for me. So another thing I wanted to do, and another thing that I'm learning more about, is tarot. So for each week I wanted to have a card of the week to reflect on myself. I think that the tarot is a very good tool for problem solving. If you're faced with an issue, even if you're not superstitious, the meanings of the cards can be applied to almost anything that you're going through and it helps you look at life or your situation in another way and gives you things to think about you might not have otherwise thought of yourself. 
For example, one of the cards I drew is Temperance. It's telling me two things are coming together in my life and I need to try to balance that. I have to be honest with my emotions and practical. I need to consider coming to a compromise with someone. How can you apply that to what's happening to your life right now? What does it make you think about? Are the drawings week to week kind of have a continuing story? It wasn't originally my intention, but it just sort of happened that way. It's a little vague. In the first week, I had her brewing something in a cauldron, and now she seems to be holding a potion with a skull and crossbones. I wanted to do a different layout for every week, but I just didn't have the time to do that this month, so I just kind of continued the same layout and adjusted it as I went. Hopefully I can get a little more experimental next month. I do have an idea in mind for next month that I'm excited about. I'm going to break away from my tavern theme for that month. That'll hopefully keep the tavern theme from getting old for me. And without giving too much away, I think next month's theme is going to give me a lot of ideas for future themes, or at least excited to build on the tavern idea. So Tamat's hair has gone through a lot of color changes over the years. She originally had like a teal green hair, and then it was kind of a lime green, and then it was like rainbow mermaid green hair. I don't know why I picked that color. I don't think green has ever been my favorite color. I've liked purple, pink, blue, I think red at one time was like my favorite color. Yeah, but I don't know why green. She had big green little washu hair with a Dragon Ball Z power level reader <laughs> originally. Um, and then the more recent years I gave her purple because purple is my favorite color. There are so many different versions of her. I never tie her down to one design at any one time and I kind of go back and forth between old designs and new designs and it kind of depends on the context and there's never really any clear indication on what that context is. I'm the only one who really knows. So this one is kind of my casual persona version and then there's like my spiritual version. There's like my role playing version. There's my canon version and then I have like more multiple canons of her because I write her into different stories. But yeah, it's basically a self-insert. Uh, cyclamen or cyclamen. Not sure how you say it. Very weird flower. Uh, when I was looking this up, there was a lot of things that said people would eat them or consume them somehow as a love potion. But they are also very poisonous, so I do not recommend eating them. There's some pretty weird lore about them. I didn't get to include everything. Some of it was kind of morbid. <laughs> um, anyway, so speaking of morbid, I have her now drinking the potion. As you can see, because I was behind, I have a lot of these are already filled in and penciled in before I got to ink them. I, yeah, I didn't have time to film, so instead of just letting the weeks go by, having the entries blank, I still used the spreads. They just didn't look that pretty. Um, but for the sake of filming, I wanted to go back and fill them in, especially because I would feel like it was a waste if I didn't go color my doodles that I did. I also like looking back in my journal and seeing everything filled out. So even if I don't get to fill in my journal that day, I will go and sit down and try to remember what I did on a certain day. Either using like pictures I took that day, um, chat logs I had with my friends or text messages. Months later, I'll go back and fill things in. And even if it's like, I went to the store and <laughs> bought groceries, I don't know. Just I just want to have at least one thing for every day. Uh, one of the big reasons I picked craft paper for this is it has been a long time since I had a craft paper sketchbook. I remember them being really fun uh, to work with color, especially like the white gel pen, because they already have this colored base and then you can use the gel pen or Posca markers to really make things pop out in a way that, that you can't really get that same effect on plain white paper. It does have, you know, a lot of drawbacks too. For example, if I wanted to do like a watercolor piece, 
I couldn't because it wouldn't look that great with the tan paper as the base of that unless I was doing gouache because gouache is more opaque. I do actually use gouache for a painting on my January 2021 setup. So if you want to see how it looks, please go check out that video. It's one of the first things I do if you don't want to watch the whole video. I think that it was pretty successful. I will probably be doing more gouache paintings in this bullet journal in the future. I'm very new to gouache, but I've been enjoying it a lot so far. It's like the best of both worlds of watercolor and acrylic. It's really neat. I think by the time I had filmed this week, it was already Friday, so this is one of those weeks where I'm gonna have to go back and try to remember everything that happened. It's hard to come up with things to write about when you've been quarantined, <laughs> so it's gonna be stuff like, oh, I sat at the computer and, you know, talked to my friends on Discord, or I binge watched all of Cobra Kai, or something like that. I remember right before the pandemic started, I was having like an existential crisis that I wasn't doing enough to take advantage and explore the world um, around me. And I just felt like I was wasting my life or wasting opportunities by not going out and making an effort to do new things or visit, you know, different parks and stuff like that. And we made a list of all these things, these like, kind of like a bucket list of things that we wanted to do and places we wanted to visit and I was really excited about it and literally like the next month we got sent home from work and I haven't been back since. It was... It's just been so hard. So when I was little, somebody gave me a the original Dungeons and Dragons monster manual and my favorite section was the dragon section and that's around the time when I invented Tiamat. This is her dragon form. Her design is very inspired by the copper dragon in that monster manual. She's become her own thing since then and has, has her own details now. One of my newest additions to her is the lionfish inspired fins which I sometimes debate taking off because I feel like maybe she just has too many things going on now. Uh, she used to be a red dragon too, but more recently I have made her a black dragon. I just basically changed her to my favorite color combo. I didn't even realize that Tiamat was in Dungeons and Dragons. Somehow I managed to miss that even though I was constantly looking at the dragon section of that book and she's right there. Back when I made her, I got the name from a book that they read to me in school, uh, Jeremy Thatcher Dragon Hatcher. And then later when I had internet, I looked up the lore about where that name came from, the um, Sumerian slash Babylonian goddess of salt water and chaos. And she is also associated with the star constellation Draco. And then much later, I realized she was a Dungeons and Dragons character, and she is, and she guards like one of the gates of hell or something like that. My team at is unaffiliated with any of them, but she can be vengeful, like the Babylonian goddess. I know a lot of people who make OCs go through like their representative personas and that they like switch them out and change them a lot but for whatever reason I've just always been attached to this dragon character and um I don't know I love her I do have a couple of other OCs or personas that I have used in the past and maybe they'll make cameos in my bullet journal and I can tell you all about them and that's all these are my completed weekly spreads. You can see by the time I have filmed this, a lot of them are already filled in. If you have any comments or suggestions or questions, please leave them in the comments down below. If you like this video, please check out my other videos. I do have a 2021 uh, bullet journal setup and I also have a January 2021 bullet journal setup. If you like live streams. I do live stream art on Twitch. My handle there is also team at Stavern. Please like, if you like this video, please subscribe. If you want to see what I have coming for February, I'm pretty excited for the idea I have for February. I think it's pretty cool. And yeah, that's
that's it. Until next time, bye-bye.